Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to PrepMedic. This week's video, I'm going to teach you how to use an EpiPen. Couple disclaimers before we get started. Number one, YouTube is not an automated dispenser of first aid knowledge. If something is happening acutely in front of you, this is not the platform for it. That's not what this video is intended by. So I really don't care if you got an ad in front of this video or if you hate my intro. That is not what this platform is for. Secondly, I am not authorizing you to do anything. I am not going to supersede your local laws, jurisdictions. This video is for informational purposes only, but understand that I'm just some guy on the internet and you have to be appropriately trained and or prescribed these medications to use them in the real world. With all of that being said, let's get into the video. So this week we are talking about EpiPens and how to use them. And if you know anything about me is I'm not just going to quickly show you how to use these and leave it at that. You do need some background. You need to understand how and when you're supposed to use these and some of the consideration that goes into uh, epinephrine and, and what even the medication is. Epinephrine is a naturally occurring substance in your body. It's also known as adrenaline. When you inject it into your body in excess amounts, such as what's in an EpiPen, it is a potent antidote for anaphylactic reactions. Now, an anaphylactic reaction is a severe allergic reaction to something in the environment. Now, this could be a uh, bug bite, bee sting, something like that. It could be tree nuts, pine nuts, latex, gloves, you name it. Literally anything in our world can cause an anaphylaxis anaphylactic reaction. Lucky for us, it's relatively rare. Usually we get these minor allergic reactions with some hives scratching, but for a few unfortunate individuals, they will need intervention if they come in contact with whatever substance they are hypersensitized to. Now, I do have a video on anaphylaxis. I also have a video on a couple different kinds of shock. I will leave them in the descriptions down below. This one is mainly focused on epinephrine and how we're going to use this tool at our disposal. All right, so as far as indications for epinephrine, you have mainly difficulty breathing, difficulty swallowing, swelling in the face or tongue or a scratchy throat with a known exposure to an allergen. You can also have decreased blood pressure, decreased heart rate. Now granted, this is with an exposure to a substance. Like if somebody comes to you and they're saying, I have a scratchy throat, but you don't know they've been exposed to something, it's not the time to jab them with an auto injector. All right, contraindications to epinephrine. Contraindications are relative contraindications because generally speaking, anaphylaxis is a life-threatening situation. That's the only time you're giving this is when somebody's life is threatened. So we don't contraindicate it a whole lot. Be aware that epinephrine uh, can be irritable to somebody with some cardiac conditions. So, you know, if somebody is prone to um, VTAC or some other arrhythmias, this could throw them into arrhythmia. Really old patients can have the same issue with it, which is why these are prescribed to individuals and not just handed out for anybody to give because uh, the doctor knows your history, but they don't know somebody else's. So just be aware of that. That's a relative contraindication to it. Other than that, there aren't a whole lot out there. So this is a pretty safe medication to give, although it will make people feel pretty bad after you give it, regardless if it was given appropriately or not. So when we look at an EpiPen, we have a couple different things on it. Now, first we wanna note dose. So EpiPens come in two main doses. The adult dose universally, as far as I know, is going to be 0.3 milligrams. So Epinephrine, this is epinephrine 1 to 1,000, which is its dilution ratio. Essentially, it's one milligram in one milliliter. This one has 0.3 milliliters, therefore it has 0.3 milligrams in it. The pediatric dose, which is usually colored green, is going to be 0.15 milligrams. So that's just half the dose as the adult auto injector. Now, if this was something we were drawing up on an ambulance in a syringe and giving it IM, that dose range could be anywhere between, you know, that 0.15 for peds all the way up to 0.5. Uh, for adults I am. So the dose does uh, kind of fluctuate depending where you are. However, in these auto injectors, it should be relatively universal across the board. When you get EpiPens, they will almost always come in a pack of two. This one comes in a pack of two and it has a trainer. Now, I got these prescribed to me because I have some reaction to bee stings and Duration Health specializes in uh, pre-prescribing certain medications for potential emergency situations and they were kind enough to prescribe me and send me 
uh, both of these uh, for use on the channel and use in my personal life uh, when I'm, you know, hiking in the backcountry away from uh, anybody else. I'll have a full review on them and kind of the services they offer later on. So we know the dose. This will have the expiration date uh, on it. So the expiration date is right here. It also has a little thing where you can see the fluid. If it's discolored at all, they tell you to throw it away. It even gives you the storage temperatures for this. So this is store at 68 degrees to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Do not uh, refrigerate and protect it from light. So this isn't something you wanna just keep in your car. Now I will say is, let's say this gets up to 85 degrees one day. Is this bad? The by the book answer is yes. However, uh, it's probably still going to work just fine. And I honestly would not have any qualms of using it on myself um, if something went wrong and that was all I had. Just be aware you don't want to be storing them at extremes of temperature at any times and you don't want to let it freeze. Same with the expiration date. Expiration dates uh, are put on all medications and you should respect them. If it expires, you should get a new one, even though these can be relatively expensive. That being said, most medications will still be good for a while after the expiration date. So once again, in a, you know, stuff's hit the fan scenario, I would still use that on myself or a family member if something was expired and that was all I had. But once again, the by the book answer is that you should not use it. Okay, so some of that stuff out of the way. The other thing to be aware of with EpiPens, these are prescribed to individuals. So for me, this is prescribed to me and I am only supposed to use it for me. That's like the legal... Uh, a definition of that, that's what you should do. However, epinephrine is pretty universal and it lacks a lot of contraindications. So the biggest issue with this is you could give this to somebody with a cardiac condition, it can cause a cardiac arrhythmia that's very dangerous. And obviously you do not know who around you has those cardiac arrhythmias, which is why it's prescribed to you and you alone. However, if you see somebody you know, out on the trail and they're having an anaphylactic reaction, this epi prescribed to me is going to be the exact same uh, as epi prescribed to somebody else. So they can be used interchangeably, but I am not promoting that. I'm not telling you or authorizing you to do that, just be aware, that's a thing. All right, I swear, we're getting to the actual use of this. So when we are about to give it, we wanna make sure, you know, the six rights of medication administration, have a video on that too. We're going to take a look at the EpiPen, make sure everything's in working order. Now, never, ever, ever put your hand or your thumb on any part of this device. Now, don't worry, this one's a trainer. This one's the real one. The trainer is gray. So I never wanna put my thumb over any part of this because what we see is people mistake the ends and they try to inject one end. They end up injecting epi into their thumb or palm. And guess what? That's not super great. It's a very potent vasoconstrictor and it's going to cause some circulation issues in those places. So we're gonna hold this EpiPen like this. Now this has a safety lock. We're gonna take out the safety key on one end. And even though a lot of these EpiPens vary slightly in how they're made, they all work about the same way. So we have this here, we have the orange tip, that's the way down on the patient. We're going to take this and we're gonna kind of swing this to our own leg or the patient's leg if we're helping somebody else administer it. And we're going to click it in and hold it for three seconds. Once we go for three seconds, we're going to release it and the end will cover the needle. Now, I do not wanna throw this away. I wanna have this for when first responders arrive. I'm gonna set this aside, make sure it's in a safe place where somebody's not gonna get stabbed if that safety didn't quite work. We're gonna make sure 911 is activated because this is something that might have to be reinitiated uh, or readministered if the anaphylactic reaction comes back. So make sure you have this there. You're gonna massage the site where the epinephrine was given. Now, you can give these this epi through uh, a pant leg. So, you your standard jeans, you know, sweatpants, anything like that will be fine to give it through the clothing. However, if they have any keys, wallets in their pockets, you want to remove those, make sure you're not going through that. If it's really thick, you know, Carhartt pants, snow gear, anything like that, I would recommend getting down to skin because it will be more effective and you'll um, ensure the dose of medication is effectively administered to the patient. Now these do come in packs of two. You can have what's called a rebound reaction. So after that epinephrine starts to wear off, if it's a really bad anaphylactic reaction, it might start coming back and it might have to be re-administered. So if they start showing those same symptoms again, after you've administered one, after you know that five to 15 minute mark, it's getting worse again, you can administer the second dose of epinephrine 
and, and that is okay to do. Be aware that, like I said at the beginning of the video, this is adrenaline. So your patient is going to feel really flushed. It can cause people that already have some panic uh, disorders, it can cause them to get kind of panicky. Um, it can cause them to breathe faster and they might think they're having another reaction when it's just uh, a panic reaction induced by the epinephrine we just injected in their legs. So just be aware of that potential. We also want to make sure we save this for first responders arriving. They're going to want to look at it. One, make sure it was, you know, in date, what concentration it was, you know, how it was used. So this is important to uh, keep this by the patient and ready to go with them to the hospital. So if you have any questions, guys, on anything I covered today, please leave them in the comments down below and I will see you next week.